I want to be clear, I did not read any directions when assembling this. Before we get to the video, I want to show you guys this workbench I got. It's basically a mobile sawhorse slash workbench that you can throw in the back of your truck or just have in your shop or your workspace. The legs are adjustable, so you can adjust them up and down, just depending on the height that you would like to work at. The tabletop actually can fold down on each side. So each side will lower down for you. It has two handles, one on each side that you can squeeze and then easily lower it down. And like I said, that does work on both sides. Now this not only can help you in tighter workspace areas, but it also helps for transportation because you can lower that down, kick the, the legs up, and then you can easily move it around and transport it to where you want. It does have a bit of weight to it, which is good. It is nice and solid. I did check it by standing on it a little bit, you know, to see, make sure it can hold some weight. It comes with some blocks and clamps so that you can, you know, clamp in or block wood up. So, you know, you can use it, like I said, as a sawhorse and things like that, which is really cool, you know, for woodworking. This is not the directions. I want to be clear. I'm just showing you guys some pictures here. You can see if you take two of them, you can put a piece of plywood between them and make a longer workbench or a longer sawhorse. Now, Vivor has all kinds of quality work supplies that you can check out that I will link down in the description. So if you want to check this out or anything else from their store, it will be linked down in the description. Today, I'm reviewing the new Arcane Knives Vault. This is a design collaboration between Arcane and Brian Brown. What an awesome collaboration to see. Now, I tried to rush this review for you guys because I wanted to drop this video when the pre-orders dropped. So these are available for pre-order. So after the video is done, if you like what you see and you want to get one or you want to pre-order one, check out Arcane Knives. Now, let's get into this. We have an M390 harpooned hawkbill blade with a beautiful recurve, a um, lot of recurve there. This is going to be nasty. And we're gonna talk about it in both versions as far as a self-defense knife and an EDC knife. Now, the M390, this is best tech. However, they're running it at 60-61 HRC. Now, I'm pretty sure the last time I seen best techs HRC, at least on their own stuff, it was 58 to 60. So I'm very happy to see them do 60 to 61. I'm not sure if this is something that, you know, Arcane and Brian Brown, you know, talked to them about or what happened, but that is really good to see. And we did do some sharpening on this, so we're going to talk about all that. Now, the blade, like I said, beautiful uh, recurved blade with a beautiful sharpening tool and plunge grind, which we'll talk more about that when we get into the sharpening. Titanium scales with a steel liner lock that's a sub liner lock. So this, the liner is screwed in from the inside and you know, it's a, a secondary to the titanium scales. Titanium mill pocket clip and a full titanium backspacer that protects you from the edge because you know, it's got a full backspacer. Now, there is different finishes f for these, so if you want to order it, there's, you know, different flavors, just so you know. There's a stonewashed version and a few other options. Just check out the site. I'll probably put some pictures up, I'm sure. Now, let's talk about the action, and then we'll start talking about the little details. So, first off, the deployment and action is killer. It is so good. Not only is the detent on my example, on this prototype, really well done. It's not too strong, not too light. Easy to break as far as detent wise is there's no struggle to break the detent, but it gives you just enough resistance where, you know, it's just not, it's not just going to pop out without you putting in a little bit of effort. Now, that being said, the hole lands in a really, really good spot for the thumb or the reverse flick, which, you know, is really good because some people aren't very good at reverse flicking, so they want a thumb flick. This is a great one. And you also can slow roll it still. You have a lot of leverage into that hole for a slow roll. And then the lock up. Nice, strong, solid lock up. I have already checked it. So nice, strong lock up. No play whatsoever. No flex, no nothing. Now, 
The secondary deployment, because it does have multi-deployments, is a front flipper. The front flipper's jimping. You know, we'll talk about that in a minute. However... The front flipper works really, really well. Like, I mean, super good. This is a great front flipper. I don't think anybody would complain whatsoever about this front flipper, even though I am going to nitpick about the jimping a little bit. But the front flipper's leverage point and how well it operates, 9 out of 10. I'd say 9 out of 10. Really, really good. 8.5 out of 10. Let's say 8.5. <laughs> it is riding on ceramic caged bearings, and it does have good access to the lock bar, so very comfortable and very easy to disengage. You can see it's got a couple shakes, and, and the sucker shits. Now, like I said, ceramic caged bearing, so it does have very, very smooth action. I can tell the pivot is nice and tight in there, so no side to side whatsoever. Let's talk about this blade and what it's good for. So, this is a hawkbill blade, and regardless if we're talking about EDC or self-defense, this blade is designed to pull itself in. So, all you have to do is get the tip. If you touch something with the tip of this, you don't have to push the edge forward. You just let the tip hit and pull straight down and it will naturally pull the material into the edge. That's what these blades are designed to do. So they're designed to pull material into them. Regardless if you are slashing or clawing, think about a, a cat's claw, right? You ever got a cat's claw stuck in on your sock or stuck on your pant leg or something like that? They're hard to get out. And it's so effortless for them to attach to you. Because once the tip enters, it's game over. You're being pulled in to the edge. And that's the same way this thing works. So when you are slashing or anything like that, this thing is going to do devastating damage, regardless uh, of what you're hitting. <laughs> Whether it's uh, something flesh or something not flesh. Uh, now, as far as slicing goes, it kind of has the same concept again. It's, you know, it's a recurved blade, so it traps the material into this part right here, and it makes for really good long cuts. So if you have cuts that are a little bit longer than maybe others, this blade shape will help stay into the cut so you don't slip out. So, so that's kind of the upside compared to the drop point. Even though some people would argue the drop point is going to be a lot more versatile, this is going to be really good for specific things. Utility cuts? My goodness, this thing's going to be great. Same concept, man. Just get that tip in there, and as you pull back, it kind of digs itself down into the thing. And that's also why it's a really good self-defense knife and utility blade or and an EDC knife. Because while it's going to be really good at opening packages and things like that, it's also, you know, if you touched a limb and pulled, it's going to... It's going to be devastating. Absolutely devastating. Uh, Life-threatening for sure. Now, the ergonomics when cutting, it's not... It feels like the blade is bigger than the handle when you have it in your hand. The, the handle is... Fair, it's kind of small if you're choked back, but you still have this choke up spot. So once you introduce that, you know, you, you feel like you have a lot more control over this. The pinch grips are amazing on this. Um, you know, utility cuts are going to be great cutting backwards, cutting straps and things like that. If you did have to snag a rope and cut it, you absolutely can do it very easily. Uh, but you know, as far as choking back here, you do have this little distance right there. So, you know, in order to prevent getting anything caught right there, it's better to just choke up when you're doing the cuts. As far as sharpening goes, the sharpening, I sharpened it at 17 degrees per side. It is, um, as far as now, after sharpening, between 20 and 24 thousandths behind the edge. So, you know, it, it's a little bit on the robust side, but still being plenty slicey. And you know, I think having this thickness is really going to help with lowering back the edge angle a little bit and having a little bit more edge stability for the Blade Steel M390. So, and so sharpening, I use diamonds, I use Veneve diamonds. Now, as far as freehand goes, really quick, you can easily freehand this on a half inch stone. So if you have half inch diamond stones, 
of some sort, you can easily do a recurve freehand with this one. Or you can easily do this recurve on one of those stones. A round stone would be probably the best because the, the, the half inch stone, while it does work extremely well, that's what I used and it went great. You're gonna have an air pocket in the middle of the stone when you're sharpening. So the only parts that are gonna, of the stone that are gonna hit the edge is gonna be the corners. However, it really doesn't matter. As long as the corners hit, the edge is getting sharpened. So that's what's important. So I did use a fixed angled system um, to, to do the full sharpening on it and reprofiling because I have an injury. So I didn't wanna, you know, uh, tolerate, you know, doing it freehand. So that went really well. I did. I used it on the KO3 from TS Prop. So the TS Prop KO3, and I sharpened it on Veneve resin bonded diamond stones to 600 grit or the F240. Now I went to 600 grit because I think M390 for the most part does really well with medium grit. Now it has the tendency to do very well with a fine, super fine edge if the HRC is really high. If the HRC is on the lower side, then it tends to be, you know, uh, it tends to slick out. So in that case, you, you're going to want a medium grit. However, this stuff felt really good on the stone. I had no problem sharpening it, no problem deburring it. I was pretty happy with how it all went, but I still stuck with a 600 grit because I wanted something with a lot of bite. And boy, did it. This thing has so, so much bite. Uh, very aggressive edge um, and after you know sharpening it or before sharpening I should say the edge angle wasn't the lowest edge angle so I wanted to adjust that but the sharpness also wasn't the highest level you know it was good um, very appropriate but now this thing is nasty sharp nasty nasty sharp so sharpening went really well. I didn't get to do an edge retention test. I'm sorry guys, I just didn't have enough time to do it. I got this injury. So, you know, I will be picking back up on the, the edge retention tests here in just a couple days. But all in all, right, all in all, phenomenal knife, really good knife. I do have some nitpicks though that we're gonna get into. The biggest complaint I have on this knife is this clip. I personally think this clip is treacherous. I don't like it at all. I, I despise it kind of. And I'm hoping he's he's going to replace it. I'm hoping this is something he's already working on adjusting. As far as my pants go with my perfect jeans that are, they do have a little bit thicker pockets. It's like hitting a wall when I try to put this in the pocket. It's very difficult to put it in the pocket. Taking it out is better than putting it in, but it's still... That sounded nasty, um, but it still is a little rough. Add to the nasty. <laughs> Anyways, my point is, is the ramp could be better. It could be a little bit smoother in and out of the pocket, and I would appreciate it that much more because this will tear up my pants personally. Now, as far as thinner jeans, uh, jeans that are thinner have thinner pockets, it'll work better, but it's still not the best. It still could be a lot better. So hopefully that's something he adjusts. The next thing is this, the, the front flipper. While the front flipper works super good, you can easily put your thumb flat on it and roll it all the way around. You have a nice amount of, you know, distance for, you know, um, locking it up, you know, with a slow roll or, you know, you could rapidly open it. Every single way of deploying this knife works very well as far as the front flipper goes <clears throat> and the reverse flick and thumb flick, but the jimping is not the, the most aggressive. Not that it has to be the most aggressive. What I meant to say is that it's not very aggressive at all. It's kind of slick. While it works good, I think yeah, adding a little bit more sharpness to, these, to the jimping will massively improve it. Then put two more jimps. Get that jimping up and around because this little top corner, I slip off of it trying to front flip. That's my one issue with this front flipper is when I put my finger up there at the top, I slip off. So I want to be able to do that. Now, once you know it's there and know it's like that, you just don't do that. You tend to put, a, you know, go a little bit lower, which is fine. The front flipper works great, but man, it could be a little, little bit, just a little bit better. I don't think there's anything wrong with this, but some people might prefer titanium liners over steel liners. Now, I'm not sure which one would be superior with this thin of a lock bar. Um, not that it's too thin. It has really strong lock up, rock solid, great sound. You can really feel 
the lock bar engagement, which I always appreciate about any knife, but I'm not sure if steel or titanium is superior when using slimmer geometry or thinner you know, stock with a lock bar. I'm not sure. I haven't tested that, so I don't know. But, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with using steel. Um, you know, it still has the titanium scale. Another little detail is if you look, you can't see the blade steel or the name. But when you open it, you'll see the M390 logo pop out. And as it comes around, it hides itself again. So you only see it when opening and closing, but you can't see it when it's opened or when it's closed. Same thing with the prototype. Now, maybe, I don't know if this is where they're going to put the name, maybe, but the prototype here does the same thing, which is pretty cool, you know. All in all, I think it's an awesome knife. I think it's very well done. I think not only is it a great design, but Best Tech, you know, knocked it out of the park. I'm really happy to see the 60 to 61 HRC. I prefer that way more than the 58 to 60, and it felt really good on the stone. Um, you know, like I said, I couldn't do an edge retention test, but maybe we'll do something like that here in the near future. But if you are wanting to get one of these, or if you just want to check out more details that I didn't mention in this video, check out Arcane Knives. I love you guys. Work hard, stay tough. Until next time, peace.